Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I'm very lucky to be playing a brand new game from a brand new game developer, Quick Quest by Wesley Hall. I say a brand new game developer, I guess he's old enough that he has a kid at this point, but he's new to game developing. You want to say hi to us, Wesley? Hey, how's it going? I, I am old. Too old. <laughs> That's fine. So are many mountains, tectonic plates, and planets, but you know, like the stars, we hope to shine forever. But you know what? We don't have forever. This is Quick Quest. I want to get in here, and I want to see how fast I can play. Okay, so what are the controls, Wesley? Uh, so just left and right will move. Uh, enter hit, gets you starting. Okay, so left and right. Okay, so I was hitting A and D, and that was not getting me anywhere. Yeah, so, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> That's fine. I like I've these. already let you down. Oh, this is... <laughs> no, no, you can talk to her in this part. Ultimate armor unlocked. You can't see any of it from. Oh, cool. So, so we're traversing this landscape. Ultimate weapon unlocked. Ultimate boss defeated. Game over. One hundred percent complete. Press enter to retry. Q to quit and return to your life. Yeah. So if I'm going for the speed run record here, I just need to hold down the right button. It seems like. That's that's a secret. <laughs> Now, now I'm on par with the greatest speedrunners on the planet. So I feel like I've actually 200% completed the game. You have. You've, you've found the secret out. I've gone above and beyond. Um, so, Wesley, I'm really excited to have you on here to talk about this. Uh, is this actually your first gaming project, or have you done any others? This is my first, like, gaming gaming project. I, you know, like, in college, I messed around with Flash and stuff. And I uh, used to have a friend, um, and we would spend nights opening up a GTA 3 on the computer and you can mess with like the tire velocity. There was just like a text file where you can mess, you can mess with like the physics of it. Mm -hmm. So we would spend that time like you could, you make the tires on this much bigger, have this much grip. And so then you would see the effects on like the real world. So we, we would do that. Well, mostly he would do that and I would watch him, but this well, is the first game project I worked on. I gotta say, most of my audience watches me play video games, so you watching somebody else make video games, like, and then seeing how that can actually pay off down the line, that's gotta be reassuring for them. Yeah, yeah, that guy works for Facebook, so, <laughs> he, he went, he went places. <laughs> Menlo Park, specifically, but yeah. it's a place, you know. <laughs> um, so, um, with this game, what engine did you use, and what tools to put this together? So I used, to actually code it, I used a program called Game Maker Studio, which I believe is free, but I got it through a Humble Bundle for like 20 bucks, which was like the professional edition, which I think just takes away the splash page at the beginning and allows me, if I, if I really wanted to, I could put it on Android or ISO, ISO phones, iOS phones. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you just want to burn an ISO phone, you know, yeah. in your old school DVD burner or what yeah. have you, because that those are still a thing. Um, and it seems like this, uh, I saw you mention this on Twitter fairly recently, like two weeks ago you were talking about this, and it's already a game. So what, what did you do to get this off the ground so fast? So it originally started as a comic idea, kind of talking about just exactly what the game is, right? You know, like... There's Skyrim and stuff, and, they, and, and they're just huge, and Dark Souls, and it takes forever to play, and I just don't have time anymore as an adult. So I started making it using a program called A Sprite. And then I go, you can find A Sprite in the description below. <laughs> That's perfect. So so I used, I, used, I used that, and I was making animated GIFs for it. And then, like... I couldn't figure out, there's no good way to really do like that complex of animated GIFs in the comic, and it already turned out to be like more work than I thought. I thought I should just make it, because the joke is the game. The joke of the comic isn't as funny. If you just have the game, let's just make the game. So I had some time, so I started, and uh, that's about it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it, it seems like... Just getting started on a project is so important, and having a good sense of scope on this, like, you pretty much knew from the beginning how many screens you were going to have, how many upgrades you were going to have, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, everything I've watched, so I've really gotten into, like, live streaming recently, and I love watching game developers, and they always talk about scope creep, and, you know, I do graphic design, and they always talk about, you know, web design, and it's always a conversation about, like, scope creep. Your project always starts small, and it's like, we could add this, and we could add that, and we could add this, and I thought, 
I'm going to make a game. Let's take it very minimal. You can move left and right. <laughs> you know, you can just move across the screens. How can we, can I figure out that much? Or am I just not that smart? If I can figure out that much, I can figure out the rest. But I need just a solid, small foundation kind of thing. So that was the intent. Was and you know it and it worked with the concept. So I think I actually started with that. Like if I can make a minimal game, this is what I need for a minimal thing. What's a concept that kind of fits that? And they all kind of work together. One thing I noticed is all the sprites are are actually very well drawn. And I know this, but maybe my audience doesn't. You're actually a professional illustrator by trade, right? Yeah, so I've done design. About two years ago, I got into starting to doing sprite or pixel animation or pixel drawing. And so I've just, and I've been ramping up recently. It's a really nice change of pace from having like a huge big canvas. You have these very limited like pixels. But yeah, I do uh, professional illustration. Other than that, I do my uh, comic namelesspcs.com. I should plug that. Is that the official phrasing? Plug. I gotta say, I really like how Nameless PCs has explored the concept of parenthood in the past. Was that something that when you created the comic, you intended to make a, a kind of the heart of the comic, or was it just something that kind of organically grew out of your life? Um, you know, it actually organically grew out of my life. So the title itself, Nameless PCs, is a reference to nameless player characters. And when we started, we were a D&D comic. So you can even go back in the archives, and there's some jokes about 4th edition D&D that probably don't really hold up. But, you know, they're still decent. And it, like I mean, 4th ed- edition is like the 1970s of Dungeons & Dragons. Everybody <laughs> still wears the platform shoes and has the disco yeah. balls. And all that all that holds up. It all works. It all works, right? <laughs> It's still in. No, uh, so, yeah, so we started there, and it just started um, actually just is like a once every two weeks on an old gaming site that's now defunct. Um, and so it slowly became once a week, and we started building a storyline. And then in 2013, I kind of crashed the website by putting some bad code in there. And um, the guy I was working with who was writing it had kind of wanted to step away from the project. So I just kind of started doing slice of life comics to kind of fill the time in until I figured out how to get the site back up or redirect everything. And then it just never stopped. <laughs> so, And then, you know, uh, about a year and a half ago, I had a child. So I just started writing about that. And that's just, I've become a dad comic. I've kind of fully embraced it by now, you know. I got to say the dad comic that I think a lot of them are great. You know, I'm, don't get me wrong. I, I'm a big fan of, of many of the strips, but the you one them all, I got you. The one that I actually bring up in conversation all the time to try to explain to people what my life is. Like, you've got the the comic of you and your child in the grocery store, and it says at the top, you know, what other people see. And it's got you and you're like whistling and I don't have it in front of me. So I'm sure I'm going to put it in front of me on the on the post-production part. And then you guys can compare my memory of this to the actual thing. But you're like whistling and pushing the shopping cart and the baby's really happy. And then it has what is going through my head. And it's you like furiously running through the store with a time bomb in the front of the shopping cart. And I'm just, you nailed it. That's that's it. Like people are like, "Do you really have to go home now? Your kid seems like she's fine." It's like, "You no. No, if we don't if now, she, now. Yeah, if she's not home in the next 10 minutes, then it, it's all over, man. It's all over." I need to apologize to like every parent friend I had before I had kids cuz it's just like, "What do you mean you can't interrupt nap time? It's just like a day." And you're like, "Oh no, you don't." No. You don't. <laughs> nap time is a sacred time cuz if they're not there at nap time everything is going awry <laughs> at least at this stage i'm at you know oh yeah it, maybe it, it becomes more flexible i mean I, we're not there i wish we were uh at three um also just to kind of switch gears i'm looking at this guy's little like the uh, boss man mm-hmm. on that sprite he's got like a little side belly gill or something that like flexes when he <laughs> breathes was that what you were going for there I think it was just kind of supposed to be rolls of fat. Okay. <laughs> it's just, he was a big, he's a big monster. Um, he's actually from one another comic I did, 
where it was like, I'm going to charge in and go defeat self-doubt and this big monster who looks just like that or similar to that um, is standing there and he was just like, oh, are you busy? I'm sorry. Maybe I'll come back later. You know? Yeah, I saw that you had that at the uh, heading of the site, and I was like, oh, man, he put a lot of effort into drawing this just for this game, you know. <laughs> Although, like, I think that's that... A, that's a change. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> well, I, I like... I, I really think that the amount of effort you put into this is great, because even though it's a short thing, it's a complete thing. Like, I actually turned down the music so that people could hear you talking instead of the game studio. But, like, I, I could actually do a whole playthrough right now with the actual original sound turned on. I, I made that sound, so that if it's terrible and you hate it, it's my call. Yeah, how did you make the sound? I used a tool called, I'm going to mispronounce it, but it's Bosca, C-E-O-I-L, so C O L. It's a It's a tool I found on, um, so I don't know if you're aware of, like, Ludum Dare. Ludum Dare? Yeah, Ludum, see, I don't even know how to pronounce I, I, it. I mean, I just assumed it was pronounced the Latin way, but it might I be would. Greek. I I'm not Mediterranean. <laughs> you know, you've got me. <laughs> I saw D-A-R-E and just didn't even question it. It might be Dare. I, I, like, in some ways, that actually kind of makes more sense, so I should I, probably be embarrassed. Like, I don't think anyone really knows. <laughs> it's a mystery. That's it just is where we mystery. are as a people. Yeah. Um, like when when you originally came up with the concept for this, you, you you said that this is this is the game for parents who don't have time to game. Yeah. And what I love about it is you literally do complete the game one hundred percent in a minute or less. Well yeah. way less. And I, I was talking to some of my friends about this and there was a huge argument amongst us. Um oh, one okay. of them was just like, Well this this isn't a game. And it's like, well, why not? It has objectives. It has power-ups. It has multiple screens. Games with multiple screens didn't even come up until years after we had games. Like Space Invaders and Pong and all those. Yes. They, they only had one screen. They called them boards at the time. Like Donkey Kong having four boards was like a huge deal. I, I hope Donkey Kong has four boards or I'll look really dumb. I know it doesn't have floorboards because otherwise the barrels would just pile up. Um, yeah. But anyway, you know, and so we started arguing, and it became clear that the people who actually have busy lives see the fact that you get to decide whether or not you quit the game is the game to some degree. Like, the fact that you can just go in and play it or not is, is a huge component. It's an additional level of controls outside of the yeah. left or right thing. Totally. I, my point when making it, so first off, it's obviously, it, it falls in that line of like joke game, you know, or like well, joke well, concept, well, right? A joke game is by definition still a game. Yeah, right. Like, like we get into this argument that. about Pluto. They're like, that's not a planet. That's a dwarf planet. You know, I'm sorry, but dwarf planet has planet in the name. This is clearly a subset of types of planets. Like yeah, you can't you can't call it a planet and then say it's not a planet. Yeah, <laughs> Clark Kent isn't a man; he's Superman. It's like no, that's not really how that works. <laughs> but so it it may be not a game in the traditional sense, but um, I wanted to give it a level of polish so you weren't laughing at the game, but you're laughing with the joke. You know, like there are enough controls and you can do left or right. You can never finish the game. You know. Well, that, just, yeah, it, the left or right thing is huge, too, because, like, you know, the one argument of, like, well, if you just hold down right, you'll beat the game every time. It's like, yeah, but what if you go left? Yeah. <laughs> you might not exactly. beat the game. Like, you're actually racing against the external forces in your life that stop you from gaming normally. If I want to go here and go, like, left and right several times, before I know it, my kid might be like, Daddy, I made a mess in the bathroom. So, yeah. like, I'm racing the clock. And, and was, I, exactly, go like, the, 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 it's that you want to fill that space where, or I wanted to fill that space where it was just enough time. So you're like, you could play the game completely and see everything and know that your kid has not hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, because normally <laughs> if I start doing something, mess. it's like she's either damaged herself or others or other things, yeah. you know. Um 
So, are there any games that you would consider influential in in your creation of this? Well, I think, you know, from the appearance, uh, obviously, uh, Mario, Super Mario Brothers, you know, there's a gray big there's a gray brick background, the white clouds. So it takes maybe a little bit artistically from that aspect. And then I would say stuff like Skyrim and Dark Souls, because it's obviously pairing, parodying something. And that's kind of what it's parodying, those games that take like 40 to 60 hours to play. I think that's like part of the joke, too, is I would read Steam reviews and be like, oh, I could finish this in under 20 hours. I was like, that sounds like a game for me. Like, <laughs> Now, you know, it used to be, I remember when I was a kid and I would get upset, like, what? And that's, that's it? That's all you're getting for $60, you know? Or 50 or even, like, nowadays it's like $5. That's all you're only getting, you know, 40 hours worth of entertainment. Uh, uh. But now I'm like, uh, can I get something shorter? I need to go to bed on time. So this, this is a complete game and experience. Like, the next time I'm just like, you know, I kind of want to play a game right now, but I have a lot of other stuff to do. I can just jump in and play this. And one of the counterpoints I made to my friend who was just like, I don't know if this counts as a game. I'm like, this is like a nicotine patch for games. Now, they don't call it a nicotine patch because it has no nicotine in it. This is still a game. But this is a game for people who have other things that they need to take care of so the games don't become a cancer that ruins their lives entirely. Because, you know, you can't afford it. Yeah, exactly right. You get that feeling of accomplishment with none of the hassle is kind of the selling point. It's like, I was calling it like Dark Dark Souls, but without all the death, right? You know, because that's what you're trying to do in Dark Souls. You're trying to get like the best armor you can to beat the, the cool bosses. So here you get the ultimate armor and you get the ultimate weapon and then you get to beat the ultimate boss. And then you get to go home. See, I can press Q and just return to my life. It's perfect. Yeah. I'm actually going to go re-edit it and just make it a sprite you. So. Yeah. That, that is a good point. I, I did like that you incorporated your um, your character from your comic. Yeah, I mean, it's all about branding. I don't know. I, just, it, I like the minimalist design. Part of it was that um, experiencing pixel art and trying to grow as an artist in that kind of sense or figure out the ramifications thereof. So using a design I had and seeing if I can translate that to pixel art was also a nice challenge. Well, while we're on the subject of pixel art, actually, I had another question. Like, I know that you've done pixel art of other characters besides your comic character here. Like, you've done Columbo pixel art. Yeah. Would you consider Columbo a big influence in your life? Um, you know, I found him about three years ago. My wife was like, here's this show my parents used to watch. I think you'll like it. And it just, like, I absorbed it. Everything about it was perfection to me mm -hmm. like even from like the tacky old outfits and the carpeting on everything oh man this you talk about like outdated fashion sense and stuff like some of those houses you're just like ooh. but i love the concept of the kind of bumbling fool who is like secretly kind of at work all the time you know like mm -hmm. secretly smart so um maybe a hero maybe kind of a. uh, uh I don't know how to phrase it, like a role model. I gotta say, one of the th things, I mean, I love a lot of things about Columbo. I love that all of the people that he's chasing around are always super rich. So yeah. even though, as you said, their houses are really tacky, they were really fashionable at the yeah, moment yeah. that the thing was made. So there was a lot of love and care put into something that's just terrible. <laughs> it is nice. It's part of the Part of the charm of it is like, because he's not of that same class. I mean, like most of them, if the person is famous in any respect, Columbo is always almost in all of them at first, and they just write him off, you know, as this kind of like, you, you know, he stands out. Everything is so stark and fashionable, and he is in a old trench coat, you know, <laughs> driving his beat up old car. I love that. Just like as that character, he's just like, you can tell he's not of that world. Every but, time I want to buy a new car, I think about Columbo and yes. his car. And I'm like, no, I need to run my car into the ground. And you have to. Until Everyone, it's like his car. Like, his car is a special car. I think there was only like 42 made of them. Oh, were wow. like shipped to America. There was a whole article I read about his car. <laughs> and I think what's his, uh, the actor, um, 
Peter Falk actually went to like an old car shop and was like that one or like an old car lot and found it. You know, he, he supplied a lot of that, a lot of the character by, I think he provided this, the clothing. He made up a lot of the mannerisms and he kind of made them up like at the beginning on the spot to keep people uncomfortable and kind of annoyed and frustrated. Well, <laughs> which, I mean, clearly it worked. Yeah. Which is great. Like you can tell like those, some of those actors are giving the best performance, you know, they ever can because they're next to this guy who's, probably annoying them well and one, uh, one of the, my favorite articles about colombo now that we're really off track yeah. was about how colombo has the potential to be the american doctor who like peter falk was definitely like the quintessential colombo but there have been like mm-hmm. one or two other colombo works like you know yeah. made for tv specials or whatever where they had somebody else playing colombo at one point or another and yeah, it was always kind of like, well, that's not really Columbo. Peter Falk is really Columbo, you know? And so the people are just like, who wrote the article are like, we need to just embrace this idea that anyone can be Columbo and make him America's Doctor Who. Uh, you I'm get an this. amazing actor and you have him in this role for like five to eight years. And it's just like, but it's always like somebody who's like kind of older. This is like the capstone of their career is that they get to be Columbo. Yeah. And it doesn't always have to be a guy. It doesn't always have to be, you know, because like in, in Britain, there's a lot of preconceptions about who Doctor Who is. But Columbo's been off the air long enough that, you know, it doesn't matter if Columbo is like an elderly Latina woman as long as she's like an amazing actress. Like people will in some degree just be glad to have Columbo back on the air. Yeah, I would, I would take that. I mean... There's a there's a fun fact that there was a Miss Columbo TV show as well. Yeah, Kate Janeway uh, yeah. played. Yeah, <laughs> someone was talking about they want to go to a Star Trek convention and dress as Columbo and take a picture with her just to, just to see if she would appreciate that. Yeah, I think her character's name was Kate Columbo or something like that, and he then was... later she's Catherine yeah. Janeway. Her name yeah. is really Kate Mulgrew, so maybe she's like Tony Danza. She just can't play other people. <laughs> It's like, yeah, she doesn't respond. They just have to rewrite it. Yeah, they, it was Miss Columbo for, like, two seasons or a season. Uh, and yeah. then they were, like, Kate solves a murder. They, like, kind of wrote out Columbo completely. It's just, always Sonny and Kate solving murders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? We, we can always get rid of that. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'm like I said, I'm a big fan of your other past pixel art projects. Um, I'm a big fan of this project, obviously, and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that there are links below for your comic, your Twitter, you know, pretty much anything cool you've made that I know about. Uh, do you mind saying out loud what the uh, URL of your comic is? Because some people they don't like looking; they want to hear. They're auditory learners. No, oh, that's good. Well, it is nameless PCs. Dot com so nameless pc those letters in an s dot com so I, nameless I papa ones. charlie sierra for those yeah. of you on the nato alphabet or allies overseas you know <laughs> hey how are you doing we are, we really appreciate you over there yep keep uh keep holding back those russians it's it's, a, it's worse than it used to be i wish that was more of a joke that's very true, unfortunately. Yeah, but we appreciate you, Europe. Um, okay, and uh, if people wanted to find you on Twitter, where can they find you on Twitter? Um, so that's at NamelessPC. Is there just one of me? Oh, yeah, that's a lot easier because it's yeah. short for character yeah. instead of characters. Exactly. Great. Uh, well, and as I guess everybody knows, I'm Joe Hills, so I don't really need to sign off. But until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Any final words, Wesley? No, just thanks for having me on. I hope everyone enjoys the game. And uh, tell your friends, tell your enemies, uh, or don't, you know, do what you got to do. And keep adventuring.